daddy and she know it already. Shake the money, make the knives raining like the fetish. Welcome, Welcome to the, to the belly, belly of the beast, beast. the den of the Illuminati, home of the Almighty Media. That's how powerful we are. That's how influential we are. And we're not stopping anytime soon, so get used to it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Who's Number One podcast. And wow, wow, what a day today is going to be. What a, what a podcast we're about to have. A big celebratory day. Uh, a lot of stuff going on in the world of jujitsu. Man, is jujitsu fun these days. We got IBJJF Worlds coming up. We got ADCC coming up. We got some killer Who's Number One shit that you guys don't even know about yet. But uh, right now, of course, today is the drop of Who's Next, season one. Huge. Huge, so I hope you guys have, are, are watching it in the chat. Everybody uh, who, who's uh, who's broing down with us here today, thanks for joining us on the Who's Number One podcast. Big day, Who's Next, episode one and two. If you haven't seen it, you can just leave right now and go watch the episodes. <laughs> um, but uh, man, it's gonna be a fun show today. We got some guests on the show today. It's gonna be a fun one. Uh, of course, as always, you got the dude, uh, Corey Stockton here, holding it down. What's up, Corey? How you doing, What's bro? What's going on, Reed, man? Episodes one and two were sick. Can't wait to get into it. It's uh, been a wild ride, I'm sure for you most of all. But yeah, this is uh, this is just gonna break jujitsu. It's gonna really like really change the game, the, change the sport of jujitsu. Uh, if you haven't seen episodes one and two, Stop what you're doing. Go back and watch those because we're going to be talking extensively about those episodes today. Uh, so let this be your spoiler alert. Um, yep, some spoilers on the way. We got some people coming in. But, but a lot of fun. These episodes are crazy. Yes, it's been a, it's been a wild ride. But man, we we're so proud of, of of who's next season one. So hope you guys are tuning in. Uh, in the back there, as always, holding it down. The chat and everything. We got Connor, Josh, and Connor. What's up, brother? Man, I'm good. How are you guys doing? Doing great, man. Yeah, we got a few guys in the chat. We got Josh Jitsu and we got Jose Becerra. Shout out Becerra. But I think I'm super excited. You know, who's next? There's a lot of cool stuff coming out, obviously, episodes one and two. But this is the beginning of Sewer Rat. You guys talk who's next, <laughs> is the reality series, whatever. That's the name of this episode? Yeah, there, that is, is the, the name is of this Sewer episode. Rat? Who the fuck is Sewer Rat? We get to find <laughs> out today. He is, uh, I think he's Jiu-Jitsu's next big superstar. He's coming for Gordon. He's coming for Galvao. He's coming for everybody, especially Mike Rock. Scratch, so. scratch. Yeah, All scratch, right, scratch. Well, Connor's already calling mm -hmm. his shot. He's mm -hmm. already calling who's making the finals here. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, I want to know what the, the chat. Let's ask the chat if they've seen the episode. Who do they like in the episode? Who's their favorite character? Who's Who, who had the best match? Uh, best moment, least favorite moment. I want to know it all. What everybody thinks. If you guys have seen the episodes or if you're watching the episodes, comment uh, in there. Let me know. Let us know what you guys think. We'll, we'll read them. All. We'll try to read them all at the end. Um, but uh, but without further ado, episode one, like we've been talking about, who's next? Uh, dropped today. And uh, we had a great cast of characters. We brought 16 of the world's best uh, elite submission fighters here to Austin, Texas for a crazy leap of faith. We decided to do this crazy fucking reality show. No time limit, submission only. Um, and, it, and it was a wild ride, like we've been saying. But uh, we brought 16 of uh, some really incredible athletes. And we got, brought one of them here on the show uh, for us to talk about, about the episode and, and his experience on Who's Next. We have the Buggy Choke master himself, 10 Planet Bethlehem's own Renee Souza is joining us here today. Renee, how the hell are you, bro? Great, dude. Just just finished watching the second episode and man, I am I, I've been sending it to my family all day. I've been sending it to all my friends. I, I think I just ran out of contacts to send it to. I just started putting random numbers in my phone and just texting it out to people. But <laughs> man, amazing, you know, um, and I don't know, it was an amazing experience. But to have captured it and put it into that, you know, realm, it I think it looks better than than how the experience was almost, you know, and it was an amazing experience. So super. Yeah, grateful I was to gonna here. ask how how does like living it kind of compare to, to watching it on a screen? Now is that a weird experience? Well, what was so interesting about living it was like most of the time we didn't have our phones, right? And nowadays, like everything just like boom, take a picture, boom, take a picture. Um some of us, as we'll see on the show, like we're argued with sometimes, but some of us were like respectful of that. And we're like, you know, true to that. So um, for me, that was a great time. Like, I really like just putting my phone down and just like 
letting, letting life happen and being present and stuff. Um, cause it really allowed me to just be there in the moment, you know? And, um, and yeah, it was, I, I don't know. It was really funny to think back on. Cause then I was like, man, did that stuff actually really happen? You know, <laughs> then watching this stuff of like, oh man, like I hate to cut it to the end, but like sewer rats match was, oh my God, it was <laughs> good. You know, like, so yeah, man, just amazing. <laughs> heck yeah heck yeah um did you have a uh what, what you know episode one and two are out are out now what uh, what sticks out to you about about episode one and two what's what's your favorite part um i think each match was very interesting right to see each person's dynamic and yeah stuff so epi- like that. episode one is is eight matches right so we so we bring right bring all the 16 of these guys and maybe you could talk about that um you know we kind of we kind of um you know dropped the ball on you dropped the bomb on you guys you know and didn't really tell you guys that exactly what you guys were signing up for here and so you yeah. kind of were yeah. walking so I, was gonna, I was gonna make you go back real quick because i was gonna say we didn't i thought i was going for a eight man 185 pound bracket i was like i want to fight tyra Tulo. you know what i'm saying um <laughs> Like when I saw Big Dan, I was like, this is not what I signed up for, but like, let's go, you know? <laughs> it, was, it was a big bomb that you guys dropped, right? When you guys are like, half of you guys are going home. I was like, I don't want to go home. Like, this is <laughs> this is not as cool. Um, but it definitely uh, put the pressure on everybody, you know? And um, some people folded in that pressure and some people like stayed true, you know? So um, that that was cool. But yeah, each, each different match, I think, really brought out a different energy and Oh man, like just saying this word, like say hearing Jocko talk <laughs> like during the thing was insane, you know, like that was straight out of left field. Um, but I think each match from the pressure we were all given came out in a different energy. So I think it was, uh, I love jujitsu, right? Like maybe a lot of people are watching uh, the, the show don't love jujitsu, but it's like, I love the, that submission aspect of it, you know? So it was really cool to see each submission, you know, all of us that were there, we didn't get to rewatch any of those matches, you know? So this was the first time I got to, I got to rewatch my buggy choke. And then, (laughs) (laughs) and then, um, yeah, like it was just cool to see other people's submissions. Like, um, uh, Kyle had a really nice heel hook and, um, Isaac had a nice heel hook and, yeah, it was, it was yeah, we, so we could we could sh- show the uh, sh- show some of the some of the action from from episode one here. Here's uh, you know uh, Renee Souza versus versus Jay Rodriguez uh, was one of the, the the first matches here. So um, yeah, Corey, you got, got any, you're you're bu- you're a big buggy choke guy, right? <laughs> uh, I'm starting to be. Renee's been giving me some uh, some pointers here, but yeah, it, um, I, I guess coming into this, how much did you know about Jay Rod? Because Jay Rod hasn't been around that much, but your first yeah. round match and you ended up pulling off this uh, slick buggy choke on him. What'd you know coming in? And um, I just saw him body lock passing and outside passing. Um, and a body lock pass is the first beautiful recipe in a, in a delicious big buggy choke. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm in the back with Kyle Chambers and Andy Varela, and I'm just like drilling it, drilling it, drilling it, not drill, drilling it to like lock it up, like drill it to like decapitate somebody, you know? Um, so the first time I did, so like it'd been playing out in my head a million and one times since seeing it, you know, but um, since rewatching it, I can tell you guys exactly what I did. Like the first one that didn't, I didn't get the good bite. I didn't really go for it. You know, I just kind of like, I was like, Oh, what is he going to do? Um, but then the next one, if you really watch me, like put my frame in his neck, he like really starts to put, and it's just so funny. Cause like somebody puts a frame, you're like, you're going to try to smash it, you know? And so it's just like counterintuitive. And then Craig even says, Oh, nice knee pummel. It's like, dude, he didn't knee pummel. I let him pass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> a little buggy joke, you know? <laughs> so, uh, that was a good feeling. Um, in terms of like, you know, like thinking, okay, this is what he's going to do. Um, I say composed, you know, you got my back kind of quick right off the bat. Um, but shout out to Eddie Bravo, you know, I've done a million EBI OT rounds. So having somebody on my back, I'm pretty comfortable there. Um, but yeah, I was, I was scared. He was going to slam me. I didn't know what was going to, was going to happen, but, uh, I was definitely happy too. It got, got over soon. You know, I was one of the first matches. So I was like chilling for the rest of the day, you know, just like taking out that snack stand at flow and stuff like that. <laughs> Y'all did clear us out on those snacks. I think we still are owed something by the WNX cast. Y'all got to send us some yeah, granola I think, bars or I think something. Adam, I think Adam should pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Adam drank like literally all of our vitamin waters afterwards. No, Adam was the reason that we were freaking there for three hours. 
He did true. pay for that. He did freaking try to submission sooner, dude. What the heck? <laughs> true. Connor, what do you, you want? Got anything for um? Yeah, yeah. Renee? I was I was curious actually, Renee. Um, you know, you you had this great matchup with uh, J Rod, and this was being shot in November, October. Yeah, November. So yeah, like you said, it was right, literally days after the the uh, ADCC East Coast Trials. You guys compete. Most of you guys competed at the ADCC East Coast Trials, and then straight from Atlantic City flew to Austin. Yeah, we were actually me, Brailler, Mike Rack, Adam Bradley. I think that's it. We're all on the pl- on the same plane on our way to Texas. So. Well, I, I was really curious, uh, you know, months later, we're sitting on all this footage. We know how the matches go, uh, but obviously we can't announce it to the public. And, you know, when we were at uh, West Coast Trials in Vegas and we got to see J-Rod make an incredible run all the way to a gold medal run uh, and then sitting in the back pocket, we're like, wow, Renee, Renee buggy choked him and put him out of the show round one i I was curious uh you know while you were watching the west coast trials run from j-rod you know kind of what was going through your head yeah um i mean obviously i'm i'm just excited you know like i i i thought i did pretty well at west coast and then to see all these other guys that i'm in in the ranks with like i felt really good um watching them i was like man like i think i can be at the the next round of semifinals you know so um i i was definitely like excited but then as soon as um i can't even, how else can i say it? like he went for the buggy choke and i was just screaming out of my i was like finish it uppercut. <laughs> actually we, stuff, we have a clip of that can we uh, can we watch that back with you no right? way yeah. me <laughs> no just or, or no, no, no no not this one uh nico the uh the j-rod buggy choke west coast trials highlight oh you guys are kind of going buggy back and over. yeah you guys are going back and forth but, for like buggy choke champ like and, you guys and, gotta fight for it speaking of that Renee, you hit a buggy choke that, that same weekend uh one of the gnarliest buggy chokes i've ever seen uh on, on day one of west coast trials that was the, the the crowd kind of erupted during that yeah it was it was pretty cool everyone's like he's gonna slam you i'm like dude i've been here before i posted my hand on the mat i controlled the distance he like bopped me on my head but as he as he bopped me on my head he's gone mm-hmm. so what do you what do you it say to people we it wasn't as much as that one that got that guy got slammed the first. Yeah, time. that was a, that was no fun. Um, but um, yeah, there's there should be a J Rod versus um, Crisp maybe or, or somebody from from ADCC Trials no, clip. It was number three. J Rod. F- no, no, no. Uh, number four. I'm sorry. Number four. But uh, so yeah, just trying to play a clip there. But um, what do you say to people, Renee, who who's, who may be don't believe in the buggy choke. Maybe say that the buggy choke is just a fad, or or, or it's it, you know it's not going to be here for, for very long, or it's you know what do you, what do you say to these people who, who criticize the buggy choke? I uh, just pass my guard then. <laughs> <laughs> Try to pass. <laughs> Try to pass. Like like that's the thing. It's just like you're. Do you want to pass? Okay, then pull guard. I'll I'll pass. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I think it's like a a meta in terms of mm. like you know. You have to you just have to be aware of certain things but i don't i don't know if any of us right all of us have been training just for a long time i don't know if any of us can really name a submission that like you can get from the other person being in such a dominant position you know so that's why i'm like so so about it i i think like people want to pass people want to be in side control with head and arm control you know so it's just um it's it's too easy for me not to go for it. So it's like, maybe, maybe it's not going to be my whole game, obviously, you know, as you guys can see me compete, like I don't just do that, but um, you have to be aware of that is, is what I have to uh, have to say to the haters for sure. <laughs> uh, Connor, anybody um, in, in the, in the chat? Yeah, man, they're, uh, they're first off, they're saying great first episode. If you guys don't know, Reed is not only the master behind behind mastermind behind uh, who's next, but he's been staying up 24 hours a day, every day, uh, basically for a few months on end to get it. So shout out Reed, everyone show him some love, but we also got people in there talking about First off, we got a few Sewer Rat fans. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then we also have a few people calling out Big Dan. They they mistook his name for Big Dave, which we're going to give the chat a pass on that because they're kind to me as well. But, yeah, everyone's, uh, everyone's talking about Big Dan being basically just – Gordon. Uh, they, some of them are saying like a, a wish dot com version of Gordon, but uh, I definitely see it. You know, you got a big leg locker. He talks like him. 
I think people are uh, being really excited about the kind of personalities that are being introduced here. But I was curious if, <laughs> Renee, anyone particularly surprised or impressed you as, as we are going through the show? No spoilers. Um, don't you dare. <laughs> Just one and two. Um, I, I think uh, one of the people that like I really got to know well that I, I think all of you guys will agree is a really good dude is Isaac like on top of his jiu-jitsu like he's just like such a chill dude um and uh I don't know I think at the end of the two weeks we all got to see like each other's character you know and then now we get to see that play out in the following months with like how we compose ourselves with different competitions and stuff like that and I don't know about you guys but I'm I'm looking forward to see Isaac at um Asia and Oceania trials um, I think he's a really good competitor. And I'm really looking forward to see um, how he does, you know, on the scene and stuff. And and just, like, great person overall. He was, he was a really cool person. Sure. Yeah, someone had called out they want to see Isaac versus Big Dan. Uh, that was the match they were calling for. But they think – some people think Big Dan looks unstoppable out there. Yeah, I mean, trials winner in his own right, right? I mean, he, he uh, definitely – Prove it to us in both West Coast Trials and uh, the European Trials that uh, Big Dan is no joke. He's a submission hunter. He knows how to use his size. But I think what's most surprising about him is how much he plays his guard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Big Dan of Force, man. That's what uh, I'm so happy that uh, so many of you guys from the show have, have found such such great success since the show. I mean, such a short time since the, since the show. But I mean, all you guys have been killing it. So it's just like it, it makes the show look good. So that, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. But yeah, no, Big Dan is is uh, you know he's gonna be a force. He's only a blue belt, and he's gonna be a force in, in the, the Jiu Jitsu community for for a long time to come. Of course, you know uh, we, we saw Jay Jay lose, but uh, you know Jay's got a bright future. Uh, a lot of these guys, it's it's hard to believe that you know Andy Varela didn't didn't make the um, the house. You know we had such so much talent um, in that first day, and uh, just goes to show you how, how kind of like tough that that first day really was on everybody because um, we definitely dropped some bombs and and uh, it was it was a crazy kind of atmosphere to to, to be in. There's a lot of tension and mm-hmm. and um, you know no time limit. That's a, that's a, that's a crazy thing. Um, <clears throat> how. How did you prepare for that, um, Renee? The no time limit. Have you ever done no time limit before? Uh, yeah, I've done no time limit. We have we have a couple different um, tournaments around here that do no time limit. But um, how I prepare for that is just like like one day a week, like just setting, not even setting the clock, like just just training, you know, until submission, you know, like and I mean may, maybe we'll have like six or eight people in the room and we'll just keep going like after each submission, depending on who's training and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I don't know. Like uh, one thing I talked about in my interviews, like leading up to it, like that's that's the roots of jujitsu. Like when I started jujitsu, there was no timer. You know what I'm saying? Like there was no like timer, like type thing. Like six, oh, we're doing six minute rounds. Oh, I beat you, Jeff. Oh, no, he looked. No, it was like, sub only, no time limit. You know, so I don't know that that was something I was kind of used to, um, but uh, I would definitely wasn't ready for a three three hour long match. But um, <laughs> anything else, sub an hour, I could go pretty hard for sure. Yeah, of course. One of one of the biggest storylines of episode one is the Tristan Overvig versus Adam Bradley. Uh, these guys fought for you know three hours. Oh my god! They were on the mat for three hours straight. Um, cra- crazy long one, crazy crazy one. You know Adam pretty pretty well. You you guys competed against each other and stayed in the house together as well. So, well, what's your take on on this three hour match? How do you how do you remember it? So I wouldn't say I know Adam pretty well, right? Because you were in the lobby that first day that we were doing interviews, right? And uh, me and Adam were sitting there talking, and you walked up, and you're like, didn't you guys just fight? And because we he just beat me at East Coast Rouse, and that was the first time I met him. But um, that set that first day that we were on set, we were doing uh, some interviews, and we just started talking. And we were kind of chill. And when we got some barbecue, and we were, like, hanging out and talking. Um, but he just seemed like a nice guy, so I didn't really know why everyone was like, why does everybody hate this guy? You know, <laughs> like why is everybody against this guy? So, um, during that during that match, I was coaching him a little bit and just trying to give him some support, just because like I don't know, I put myself in those shoes and like what if what if that's me out there and everyone's hating on me like and nobody's coaching me? So I, I like try to coach him for pretty much all the match. You know, um, ended up like facetiming kind of Duarte and kind of Duarte <laughs> told him like get his shit together and like, <laughs> after it and stuff. 
Um, but yeah, uh, he, he, <laughs> he kind of was like, tell, a... tell him to move, tell him to, t- tell him to, tell him to get out. You're like, I've been telling him that time. <laughs> yeah. I spent three hours, man. <laughs> what a fun phone a friend, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a great resource. I was really I, disappointed. I, tra- that I tried all three. Too. I tried Galvon, the Rotulas and Kynan. He was the first one to pick up. He was like at the gym, like lifting. And his friend was like, <laughs> in between sets and like talking to me i was like let's go <laughs> i was really disappointed that didn't make the that didn't make the final cut because that was uh for me like watching that match that was the wildest thing that happened it just like here's renee on the side uh, allowing kynan to coach through renee at adam <laughs> in this three hour long match yeah, uh, it, yeah translating of, uh, translating too like kind of saying in portuguese <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I just just I haven't been able to catch up on the final cut. Obviously, I've been seeing episode one come through. We, we've watched it several times in the office. But did the did the belt promotion at the end end up making no. it in? <laughs> oh no, not quite. Dude, what? I'm pissed about that. <laughs> we cut back to it, you know, in episode two. We, okay, we reference good. it in, okay. in episode yeah, yeah, yeah. two. So so maybe we should give. Is it spoilery? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Is it spo- so? Oh, it's, Go, go ahead. Episode, it was in episode two. Oh, they said okay. It. Good, good, yeah. good. That, uh, yeah. But they didn't that, show that video. You like, <laughs> want to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Craig Jones gave Sue Rad his brown belt 30 minutes after he met him. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, try, he tried to give Mike his brown belt, and Mike was like, get out of here, Craig. I don't want it. And then Craig's like, fuck it. All right. <laughs> I guess Sue Rad's a brown Sue belt. Rad. Yeah, yeah. What a, what a way to <laughs> intro yourself to the jiu-jitsu community now as uh, – is that it? Craig Jones' first brown belt, or does Isaac technically count under? I yeah, think Isaac got it first. One, yeah, yeah oh, Isaac okay. got it there first. <laughs> Damn, Isaac second though. Rat. Yeah, so uh, the name of this episode is "Who the fuck is Sewer Rat?" Yeah, yeah <laughs> Renee, yeah. can you can you shed some light? Wow, you're giving me this. <laughs> <laughs> so Sewer Rat, <laughs> I, I know Sewer Rat, right? And then I like, I mean, obviously focused on jujitsu, but walk into my hotel room focused, ready to compete. I see all this like not jujitsu gear on the bed. And I'm like, all right, if we have to fight a roommate, I already won. <laughs> <laughs> I already won. You no, know, no, like jujitsu tarot or anything. I was like, this guy, this guy's going to suck. Um, I'm, I, this is not a lie. The room already smelled gross. Like it already smelled like a little. Weird. And I was like, dude, what's going on? And then uh, as I'm in there, he comes in. And uh, I like lift up the card that says like, oh, welcome Renee from Flow. And there's a little rat, I, sw- I swear, a little rat, like a little like play rat under. It. He's like, do you like the rat scratch? And I was like, what? <laughs> like, my room, I already have to defend myself. Like, are the cameras up in here? Because <laughs> um, it just seemed like he just seemed like such a character, you know. But then uh, I was having dinner with Adam. We went out to we went out to eat, and then uh, I called Sue. I was like, hey, you want to go train? And we went to go train, and he was just – we did a rubber guard class. He doesn't know any rubber guard. He's just, like, playing around and doing his stuff, you know. Um, but he seemed like a really nice guy, and just – I accepted him, you know, being a rat. So I was just like, all right, this is, this is him, you know. He starts telling me about, like, his different, like, rapping things and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, all right, do whatever. And then, like, he plays it. I was like, dude, this is actually – this is a this is a box, you know. This is this is made with my left hand, bullet in my right. You know what it is. Put it in my sight. Sewer rat. Uh, no, all his raps, bro. All I want is this is young black belt. Like dude, he has a Christmas album. He has an entire Christmas album. He does. Uh, can so so the the community may not be aware. Can someone explain the history and how we found him between him and Keenan Cornelius? Because. Uh, that's kind of the real origin story of it, isn't it? <laughs> I don't really know that the history too much between him and him and Keenan. Uh, I do, I do. Oh yeah, give it to us, Renee. Yeah, so uh, he moved out to Legion. They put out a post like, "Oh, active competitors or people who want to take jujitsu seriously, like come out to Legion." Blah blah blah. And uh, I'm sure like a lot of schools do that. Like, hey, you yeah. want to come train, train for free? Like, we'll pay for competition and stuff like that. So he went out there. And um, long story short, it was it was sort of working out, but I mean, all of us train in different gyms. You know, some some different characters don't fit together, and mm-hmm. obviously that was just too big of a character to fit there, <laughs> um, along with some other <laughs> understandable, right? I think I think they've squashed it. We we talked to Keenan, and Keenan get Keenan gave us his recommendation, so felt good <laughs> about it. Yeah. But, you know, people will always say there will always be drama. So there's drama. But the real news, the real news is that, you know, Surat is, is a good guy. And um, 
and uh, there was just like little little uh, misunderstandings and stuff. But then, um, but then, yeah, he came back to New Orleans, started you know training like pretty sure he trains like three times a day, like in the morning when he gets out of the sewer rat system, you know, like um, <laughs> right when he gets out of the pipes in the morning when he crawls out of the to- tunnels. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, out of the tunnels. Dude, the tunnels are dark. I don't know if you've ever been in the tunnels, but... <laughs> but Renee has. That was wild of you to crawl down there. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I was worried. I saw, like, some dirty clothes and stuff in the tunnel. I was like, man, I'm about to die right here. And, like, Andrew and Tagger will definitely put the top back on top. <laughs> <laughs> did, you guys, did you guys remove the top on purpose, or did that just happen? I don't think we to... removed it. I think you guys removed it. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> it confirmed. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> Reed usually didn't tell us to do anything. He would just like stand around and I was just like, we just do our thing. Like there was like <laughs> the funniest thing about this whole show is that like, it was just so natural. You know what I'm saying? Like all the stuff we did was just like, I, maybe some other people like lied about some stuff, but like, I felt like I was being myself the whole time. I felt like we were just doing like that. Like I literally thought like I could have bet my life that sewer rat was in there, you know, and maybe he was, but I just didn't. See it, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> He was hiding Vision further in the darkness. Like, brown, you know? mm-hmm. Well, Renee, as as we look forward to episodes three, four, five, six, you know, you saw the um, you saw the uh, um, you know, kind of trailer for for, for the, the next episode. Without giving too much away, like, what, what are you kind of most looking forward to to see on the, on the rest of this uh, this season? Man, if I have to make a statement to everyone, it's that um, watch episode three because Flo put us in direct danger of all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I am super chill with Reed, but I was about to freaking push him. He pushed back, buggy choke, like flying out. <laughs> I was not cool with it. Like, I think I can say a little. We were like doing this bull riding thing. I was like, how are we going to bull ride and then train today and then compete tomorrow? Like, who wrote this? Who made this up? <laughs> Stupid. But uh, I, I guess it's just kind of like jiu right? Like, you're like, oh, you're going to go choke this guy. Like, what? It's crazy, but. When we actually did it, it wasn't it wasn't as bad as it was. So, <laughs> shout out to Reed. <laughs> <laughs> yup, that was a crazy one. That where it was, uh, it made sense mm-hmm. on paper, and then when we got out there, we're like, holy <laughs> shit! It's like we're actually doing this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you weren't in there, Reed. You were not in there. <laughs> that's how you know. We that's how flow there. works. We just kind of we halfway thought it through. And we're like, fuck yeah, it, they'll right. be all right. They're pro athletes. They'll they can figure it out. <laughs> oh. Craig's in there riling up the bulls before. Is it Craig? Get down. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to piss them off, just poking them and shit. No. I know Renee's at. Like, yeah. From over- <laughs> <laughs> I know Renee's a busy guy. Any any um things in, in the chat for uh, for Renee? Any, anybody have any questions for Renee? Anything? Uh, no questions. Everyone just seems to be a big fan. Uh, we got a Renee's the man. Y'all did great with the show from uh, Andy Varela. So Andy's in here in the chat. It looks like unless uh-huh. it's a it's a burner account under his name. Lots of people throwing up the sewer rat. We got O Steve and everyone uh, wishing you luck, uh, Renee. Ex- super excited to see uh, the rest of the show. Uh, super excited to see any uh, more competitions you got coming up. But maybe we give Renee a shot to plug something. If yeah, Renee, where, where we get these this shirt you got on, bro? Where, where we buy this oh, thing? This one? Oh, this yeah. one? Uh, everything's on Instagram. Just follow my Instagram at Renee Sosa underscore Sosa. Um, yeah, I have a lot. I have a lot of stuff coming up, but um, yeah, um, just super thankful for this opportunity, you know. And um, as much as this opportunity didn't like open the door to so many other things, it opened like a lot of stuff for me, like internally, you know. So. Um, like I said before, but shout out to you guys, you know, like you guys are the man and, uh, it's really like the show changed my life. So we're just getting started, Renee. Thanks brother. (laughs) Hell yeah. Yeah. All right, Renee, I'll let you get back to school. See you brother. Thanks for, thanks for coming in. (laughs) Peace Renee. Later guys. There he is. Renee. So is a 10th planet Bethlehem buggy choke master, uh, won his first match via buggy choke. Uh, against Jay Rodriguez. He has a great match here coming up in the next uh, couple episodes. Make sure that you guys tune in for -hmm. future episodes, see who Renee goes up against, and see how he does in the uh, future competition. Last second plug, because Renee decided not to. He's let us know that he is actually started his own youtube channel he's coming out with content if you want to figure out how to buggy choke the world you too can follow him uh he'll have a bunch of stuff coming out there probably about the show so 
Sick. All right, guys. Well, we say goodbye to Renee Sosa from the show, but we are going to uh, f uh, fly in another guest here and uh, and talk about the show, talk about episode one, talk about episode two. This guy's all over both episodes. Um, of course, it is the Atos Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt, the man with maybe the best mustache in Jiu-Jitsu these days. Jesus Christ. Ooh. Adam Bradley is on the show all the way from San Diego, California. What's up, Adam? How you doing, bro? I'm doing great. How you guys? Man, we're killing it. Yeah, we're chilling. We're chilling, dude. What, what's new? Not much, man. Just been chilling. I watched the first two episodes today, and man, so sick. I was. I'm still sweating. It, it was so. It was so <laughs> sick to watch. Yeah, man. So it's uh, you know, been a been a wild ride. We shot it back in in November. Like, what what have you been thinking about since since November to to now? Like, have you been uh, excited, anxious, nervous about it? What, what's the what's the emotions kind of you've been thinking about? Oh, all of those. You know, everything. I've been excited. I've been nervous, anxious. Like, oh, how you know? How am I gonna look? Uh, you know, how's the show gonna come out? And honestly, it's way better than I could have ever expected. You know, so in the meantime, you know, I've just been focused on other things. You know, my training and overall, like, just my overall well-being and being the best version of myself. Right, waiting for this to come out and seeing myself from back then compared to now and the big improvements I've made in all aspects of my life. It's you know, it's great to see. Heck yeah, heck yeah. So episode one drops, of course. Uh, you know, you, you're one of the, the, the main characters, the, the, the big kind of stories of episode one in that, uh, you know, you had the, the three-hour match, of course. So, you know, longest jiu-jitsu match in flow grappling history, certainly. Longest jiu-jitsu match I've ever been present for. Um, you know, cr crazy, crazy match just to watch. I can't imagine what it was like to be there on, on the mat. Can you, can you kind of explain? Can you kind of tell us what, what that was like for you? I never want to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> never. never. Man. Um, watching it back, like you can just see how miserable I was, like on my face. Like forty minutes in, I was like, "All right, I hate this. <laughs> this is <laughs> awful." <laughs> um, he was, you know, so much tougher than I expected. You know, props to him. Um, I felt like the size and the like strength advantage he had made me want to play very smart and not use my energy at all. You know, during that match until I got the finish right, and I think that's probably what helped lead that match to be so long. Um, and also my first time competing in that rule set, you know, so I was, I've never trained for that before until like the week before, you know, so I was like, you know, just going into it, not really knowing if I was prepared um, with the, what do you call it? Like my game plan, you know, I knew physically, mentally I was prepared, but like didn't really know how to handle it. And uh, I think just mental toughness <laughs> is uh, what won me the whole thing. When you look back at that, that three hour match, I, I can't imagine sitting grappling for three hours against somebody as tough as Tristan. How much of that did you remember? Like looking back at the match, like did you bl block it out. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's probably like an hour of me and Mount, and that just like I couldn't have. I have no space for that in my brain. That's out, that's out of it. <laughs> so um, all I know is I felt you know terrible. I was so tired, dehydrated. I lost eight pounds during that match. They weighed me after eight pounds less. Jeez. in one match wow it was so insane like and the half amount that was of... blood <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bleeding. yeah first my eye gets split and i was like sweet not this again and then i really messed up my wrist like my wrist is that was november my wrist is just now like feeling to the point where i can train with like minimal tape and stuff on it like it, it was bad i was in pt for a while um and then on top of that just getting smashed you know it's like it sucks to be under that pressure for that long and wonder when it's going to end when my time's going to come to finish but like in my head i was just so like i just turned off all the emotion and i was just like i'm not losing i'm not losing no matter what just not losing mm -hmm. and i was willing to deal with whatever he wanted to put me through until i could mentally you know come out on top and tap him man it was it was definitely the most exciting you know, and just most exhilarating moment of that day. We, we ran that day, eight matches back to back to back to back. It was a long day, and but um, nothing was more exciting, more just like uh, attention grabbing than than when that match happened, and especially at the end when when, when you finished him. Um, just like it was, it was one of those things where I was like, man, I can't believe they're they're still going. But 
it paid right. off it paid off like in, in just incredibly because you, you said exactly like you showed who you are you showed your heart you showed you can't you can't break you and um yeah, I feel like it showed like so much about you specifically this match and everything like that. Do you feel like that? Do you feel like that you got to show a little bit of of, of like, you know, who you are deep down? Oh, definitely. I feel like you know what I might have underperformed with that day, and like my, in that you know, yeah, in that day with like my game plan, my ability to like control and finish right away. You know, I showed like at least I could show like deep down, like how much I want it. Right. And, uh, I feel like that's something I had above everybody else that day. I don't think anyone else was willing to grapple for the three hours. If they told them, if you told them three hour match, they probably would have said no. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I think, uh, all those things I've been through in my life, like three hours of getting messed up for a bit, you know, that's nothing. So I would do that. I would do that again. If I had to, I just really don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Got it. You want to ask uh, Adam anything or anybody in, in the chat interested? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I w- want to say for the crew here that may not be aware, Renee Sousa, Sousa just was on the podcast, obviously, and went straight from the podcast into True the fan. comment section, uh, started talking, and he had a question, Adam. What's up with the shirt? Can you give us a look <laughs> at the shirt? Are you playing possum? Is this a – is this <laughs> – there you, you go. Know, the- those cringy like wolves howling at the moon yeah. shirts you see at Walmart. Like I saw <laughs> this with possums, and I was like, "This is my spirit animal." <laughs> like, they play around the trash, and they just don't give a shit, you know. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm way. So, is, it, is that a possum. sewer rat reference? <laughs> sewer rat, sewer rat, be proud of him. So he's yeah. my hero. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, he Renee actually also said that he would have tapped at the 59-minute mark, so shout out you, Adam. You already out-hearted, Renee. But I, I personally had a question. Uh, I've been, you know, obviously I, I stay on Instagram a lot. Uh, we're kind of tag- plugged into uh, social, and it seems like you've been having a back-and-forth recently. Uh, I know it's been historically you've been doing it a few times, but it seems like it's picked back up between you and Gordon. What's up with that, man? No, no, he just wants my attention, I guess. You know, I'm just chilling. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what happens. I think he just wakes up one day and he's like, where's Trap? have to mess with Trap. <laughs> and then, you know, he just tries to claw at whatever mediocre roast he can grab and hopes. And he thinks that's like, yes, this is it. Like his last one was like messing with me about my like Airbnb, how I was like happy about a good view. And he's like, oh, this guy bragging about an Airbnb. I'm like, what? No, just like happy to be on vacation, got a cool beach, you know, side hotel. But he sees that and he thinks that's roast worthy. Like, I just kind of wonder what goes on up there, dude. He's he's got issues. But again, like I'm showing, I feel so much fun with it. And I'm just going to let him keep doing what he does. Because obviously that makes him happy. If he needs that to be happy, then who am I to, you know, deny him of that? So I'll be over here chilling, living life, and he can be on his phone, refreshing his feed, waiting for another post of mine, and stalking my Instagram. Whatever, I'm chilling. There you have it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that answers it perfectly. I know. I know you guys have had history. I saw. Uh, I saw. I think it was West Coast Trials. You guys uh, had a little eye contact going on. I was just curious. I was curious, and I'm sure the fans were too. Yeah, yeah he's my biggest fan out of all of them. So I don't know. He tells people. I'm bad, and then he hates me, and blah, blah, blah. And then his fans have a hard time thinking for themselves, you know? So they're like, oh, yeah, I hate him, too. I don't know him, but I hate him. So it's pretty funny to see that. Like, you guys will f- drop, like, a post about me, and the comment section is just piranhas of <laughs> random people with mm-hmm. all these opinions. And it's pretty funny. It's really, really funny to see. To be honest, Adam, it's really, really funny to see. I was, like, really excited for people to see a different side of you mm-hmm. on, on the show, you know? Because like, cause you, you do mention it, you know, and, and you do for some reason have have a bad rap in the, in the jiu-jitsu community um you know at least on social media world and stuff like that sometimes um so i was really excited to, to for people to see kind of like a different side of you uh, a little bit especially in, in episode two and, and we, where we kind of learn where, where where you came from and, and how you've been able to uh, you know accomplish what you've accomplished in this sport so um, i'm just wondering how how you perceived episode two and and um you know if if you think that people might view you in a different light um moving forward I mean, first off, like the people who like don't like me, they just don't know me, right? Yeah. So it doesn't really matter, you know, their yeah. opinions. You know, they just do whatever, you know, they see one thing and get their opinion and that's it. 
um doesn't bother me much but episode two yeah i felt like you guys did a really good job of showing more of my background some more personal struggles which you know when it regarding like mental health and all that like a lot of people aren't willing to talk about it especially men you know it's very like taboo and so i think it's important to talk about in the athletic um sense as well like when it comes to performance and there's all the pressure you have to go through and you know if your brain's not right then you're not going to perform very well um but overall i think you guys did a really good job with episode two it was super fun for me to watch and even though i got like you know what happened happened i was like i still had a good time watching you know so i feel like you guys did a really good job with that and i try my best to be a g you know um I wish I want to be a G. What was a, what would a G do? He would accept that match, you know, one-handed, and he would win that match one-handed. Um, but I was a G, but I was a lowercase G, and that's okay. <laughs> I was I was curious about uh, when that matchup got made. You could kind of see both mm. teams a little bit incredulous that that was the that was the decision, and obviously Big Dan had the decision-making process there, and he was on your team, and it seems like he gave you what you know probably most people would consider the toughest matchup outside of, I mean, maybe you could say Jansen's up there, but Isaac's one of the favorites. Uh, what did you think about about being matched up with him by your own teammate? Yeah, and also I'm wondering if you, if you like, um, you know, anything surprised you about, you know, because you didn't see any of those, like, confessional interviews and, and, and stuff where, where we were talking to people. So I'm just wondering if, like, anything surprised you, too, in, in how that went down. With the like physical condition I was in, any one of those guys would have been a tough matchup for me, you know, at the time. So I was kind of like, kind of felt effed either way. <laughs> so <clears throat> I got super nerfed right off the bat, which sucks. But um, yeah, that decision, I was like, really, dude? Like, what are you trying to do here? Like, I believe, you know, I was his biggest threat on the on the team. If I was healthy, you know, if I was full on healthy, I would have been the biggest threat. But I think he. Uh, was probably scared of Isaac, even though he said he wasn't, but of course he's going to say he wasn't. Um, and I think he just did that strategically to get us, get one of us out so he doesn't have to worry about it. But, you know, I think he should have picked his own match. Um, other than that, yeah, Isaac's super good, you know, really great jujitsu. I knew if I was healthy, 100% healthy, I think that would be a really sick match, you know, in the future. Um, and I think it could go differently for sure. Um, I kind of just wilted the first like five minutes. I was too just messed up. I couldn't even like function the next day. I couldn't get out of bed. And like my internal intestine, like my intestines, like, I couldn't go to the bathroom. Like it was that every little fiber in my body was in pain. Like my wrist wasn't good. Like I know it all sounds like excuses, but I'm just describing. I've never felt that kind of pain before. Like I've been training for a long time, trained hard, and I've never. I just it was. I can't even describe the pain I was in. So just went out and did my best, but. Like I said, lowercase g. <laughs> I don't know about that. That's a that's a that's a capital uh, G move for Sounds sure. Like <laughs> I, I wouldn't have done that for sure. I've been like, I'm going home, bro. I'm laying in bed for the next two weeks. Yeah, f 59 minutes. I think yeah. is uh, is is all Renee or or I can say I don't know. Yeah. Make it 59. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I still want to say no to the match. You know, like I'm not gonna like, especially like on a big show with the lights are on. I'm not gonna be that guy who's like, no, uh, give me this guy instead. You know, I'm a little sore. <laughs> you know, I was trying to play it off like I was not as bad as I really was. You know, I didn't want the other team to see. They could probably see how messed up I was. You know, on the day to day. But yeah, I just didn't want to say no to a match, and I knew it might not go well for me. But at the same time, like, I'm not like winning's great, but overall the experience I was having so much fun with, and to go test myself on that rule set under those lights is, you know, all I can really be happy about, you know, win or lose. I had a great time. Adam, I know the, the episodes have only been out for a couple hours, but what's the reception been like for you so far uh, from friends, family, fans? Oh, people are watching outside this office right now. They're all hyped about it. <laughs> they, all, they all were really enjoying it. Every time they see me, they're like, that's Trev. <laughs> <like>, yes, that's <laughs> Yeah, I feel right now. Um, yeah, and it's super fun to see everyone else on the show and knowing them in real life and then seeing them on the show. Like, I'm just laughing, having such a good time watching it, and I'm, I'm still sweating. Like, it's so it's so fun to be a part of this. Sick. And, uh, yeah, who else, you know, anybody else, you know, just uh, without giving too many spoilers, or just, you know, maybe kind of one and two, anybody um, really stick out to you from, from episodes one and two? And anybody, um, you know, that you liked mm -hmm. watching? I mean... Everyone was so good, man. There was so much good jujitsu in those first two episodes. Um, Suarat, though, <laughs> man, <laughs> he, was, 
it makes me laugh so much. I was, I'm still crying like about it, like <laughs> out there, like people are like, what's wrong with that guy? I'm like, it's genius. It's genius. You're going to love it. <laughs> you might not get the humor, but you might not get this humor, but you, it, it's top notch. Yeah. You gotta um, appreciate it. <laughs> Jiu-jitsu wise. Yeah. Like, of course, like Isaac, beautiful jujitsu. His game plan against me was perfect. You know, keep me moving the whole time, get me tired and don't give me a rest. Anytime I got to a position where I thought I could chill, muffle me, you know, make it hard for me to breathe. That's genius, you know, really good work on his part. Um, and then who else? Like, I mean, basically everybody. Like, Renee's buggy choke was super sick. You know, I even tried to warn J-Rod about it before. I was like, because he tried to catch me with it at trials. I was like, don't he's got he's gonna try to buggy choke you i didn't tell him how to escape it but i told him how to watch out for it <laughs> but um yeah like renee looked super good um everyone tack it everyone was super super crisp and ready and it was so fun to watch heck yeah what an experience huh is it was it weird watching it after living it right yeah to like relive it a little bit it was and to see it from the viewer's perspective it's so cool i'm very thankful to be a part of it I, in the wise words of Renee Sousa, Sosa, excuse me, I keep doing that, Renee, I apologize. In the wise words of Renee, you should have hit a buggy choke. That's <laughs> He's letting you know in the, in the chat Can you buggy now. choke, Tristan? I don't know if you can. I don't that's know. Like, that's a lot of neck. Either no. Tristan, or could, can you do it to Isaac? He's he's in a room where everyone's constantly trying to do BS moves on him, too. It probably wouldn't have worked that well there, either. I tell Renee that my hips and knees aren't flexible enough. He tells me I just have to shrimp out, but I still don't think I can hit it. I think I'll break my own knee first. You know, anytime I try to like try it on anyone, I'm, I think my legs are too stiff for that. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty flexible, but when it comes to my hips, not so much. I, I'm not landing that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shrimp and get out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anytime I get my guard passed, which is rare, by the way. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> but anytime I get my guard passed, I'm always just like, Wait, which, can I do this? Can I, can I try it? I haven't hit one right. yet, though. Yeah, one other note, I was watching uh, Tristan's post-match interview and saying I was stalling. And like, how am I stalling? I'm on bottom mount. Like, you're supposed to be trying to submit me, dude. <laughs> like, I'm not going to work super hard to get out and be tired for nothing. Like, I'm going to wait for him to go for the submission that's right there in front of him, you know. So I thought that I was like, come on, man. Like, he was trying to rag on me. I, I have nothing bad to say about him, but... I thought it was interesting called stalling. I'm just like, I'm surviving, dude. I'm freaking tired. <laughs> I'm, I'm outweighed by like 20, almost 30 pounds, I think. And that dude was beefy. I was fighting Hodor. Mm. Nuts. <laughs> nuts. Yeah, that, the finish there, man. Can, can you talk? Do we have a clip of, the, of his finish? No, 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 no we sorry. have that one. Um, but um, can you, yeah, maybe you could walk us through the finish real quick. What do you remember from, the, from that finish? I remember we put me in one last arm bar. You know, I was like, well, time to do this again. <laughs> I think I ate like five submission attempts um, that he put me in. So I was like, okay, got to escape this one, but end up on top. You know, uh, the goal was to get him on his back. But the first time I got on his back, I was too tired to like keep him down. And he just got right back up. So this time I was like, okay, I need to keep him down. So I was able to keep him down. He was exhausted. Um, so I got out of the arm bar, slipped out, and I kind of just walked around his guard. He was so tired. So I was kind of like, and like walked around to north south, then he turtled. And then uh, I was able to get like, crucifix pin an arm slip one hand under for the choke and then sink in the forward naked and they tried to like get up huge and you know flail out of it but i was not letting go and so i was able to get a tap there finally and you could tell i was very excited to get out of there mm-hmm. did, you, did you know you had the choke when when did it sink in that you had that you had this shit oh like as soon as i got my wrist underneath the neck before i even like got my arms together i was like this is it like i'm not losing this this is this is this is it. He's done. Going home. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Did you are are you using that match now to sell any escape artist DVDs? Because that may be the best one you got. Play and conquer always. Oh. I mean, I think I'll have plenty of footage to use for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> My escapes work. Like the head and arm choke escapes. People love to say online it doesn't work, but I'm like, I got lots of footage of it working, dude. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> they can't deny it anymore, man. You're in there. Yeah. And I, I never even tried to make myself advertise as an escape artist, like as like my nickname or anything like that, persona, whatever you want to call it. Like it was just for, I saw Houdini. I was like, oh, he's an escape artist. So let's use that as my theme for, you know, escaping submissions. But then, you know, I have so many videos of me getting effed up and then getting out and winning that I kind of got the nickname, the escape artist, right? <laughs> so, but honestly, Go ahead. I'm sorry. sorry um, it's not always easy to escape, especially when someone's really good. Like that's why like with Isaac, I was like, man, I can't, 
he's too good and he's too tight um, with these submissions. I can't do this forever. But with someone like Tristan, you know, he's very tough, but more just physically imposing, right? And the technique wasn't quite there to keep me in. So I feel like someone like Isaac, yeah, I made the mistake of like kind of playing the same game as I did the first round. And I couldn't help it. I was so by five minutes in, I was like, well, that's all I had. Like I was, I got a couple entries on his legs and I was like, well, now I can just hope to survive until he gets so gassed and then beat him the same way. <laughs> that was not the right game plan, but that's basically what I defaulted to. And then, uh, yeah, it didn't work out for me that time, but I think my next run for submission only no time limit, um, I'll, I'll show up a lot more prepared. Since episode one, have you added the awesome escape to your repertoire? <laughs> have, you, have you tried that out at the gym yet? Oh, for sure, for sure. It's genius. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> just it is kind of genius. <laughs> I loved watching Gabe just kind of like walk around. He's like, I don't know what to do here. I've never seen that. How about Renee calling, uh, start him neutral. Start him neutral. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That, that was laughing so far, dude. That was my favorite match so far. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's funny because before the the round started, he was telling us, he's like, I'm going to go possum if I need to. I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that if I, if I need to Bold that's strategy yeah. so funny yeah so good he's my favorite people. yeah yeah all right adam thanks for coming on the show bro i guess um you know uh without giving too much away what, what are you most looking forward to uh you know these we have episodes three four five six com- coming out later without you know any, no, any spoilers what, what what's what's got you got most excited these challenges man these challenges are gonna look awesome you know um, you know, there's a little clips of what the challenges are like. Um, I, won't, I won't say much, but there's going to be a lot of sick, epic moments. There's going to be a lot of moments where I'm laughing at myself. And yeah, can't wait. It's going to be so fun. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. I got a lot in store for you guys. Uh, these episodes are going to be dropping every Wednesday here from, from here on out. We are skipping IBJJF Worlds Week. So, so next week, episode three drops, then we're going to skip a week. And then episodes four, five, and six will drop. Um, so keep a lookout for that. Uh, any any last uh, questions or anything for, for Adam? Um, no last questions, but I will say for everyone watching, if you want to watch the WNX show, in, in the meantime, Who's Next will be on Flow Grappling. Later on, they will all be uploaded to YouTube, but if you want to watch uh, along, you gotta you got to be on Flow Grappling. Though you don't need to be a subscriber to watch. So. Yep, yep, all free. On, you can go to whosnextseries.com mm-hmm. and watch them. You can go to flowgrappling.com and watch them. All free. They will go up to YouTube soon. Um, we just got to get them up. We got to finish them all and put them up on the site first, <laughs> and then they'll go up on the on YouTube. I yep. promise. Um, so I'm excited to see how you know what the YouTube community thinks about it as well. But in the meantime, who's next series.com, flowgrappling.com, you can check it out. Yeah. What do you think, Corey? Uh, no, but keep uh, uh, keep posted for some big who's number one news coming up. Uh, and Road to World still on its mm. way out. World the World Championship uh, now just a couple weeks away. So uh, we're gearing into that. Uh, got some cool trips ready for you. Crazy, crazy. Adam, uh, where, where can people buy the Escape Artist D- DVD? How can they follow you? Where, where can they learn more about you? Yeah, so follow me on my Instagram. I'm trying to post a lot of good content now with um, you know posting short, easy to read, or like very digestible you know, jiu-jitsu techniques. So um, give me a follow at trab underscore BJJ, T-R-A-B. Um, yeah, so I'm going to post a lot of good content there. And you can find more insights to the show, um, to my instructionals and of course all the stupid drama that seems to come my way so <laughs> tune in <laughs> all right thanks so much adam appreciate it say what's up to all the guys at atos for us and we'll see you later man thank you guys see you adam later, the adam. real adam bradley everybody there he goes we had adam we had renee it was a fun show today um who's next man oh, yeah man. We're gonna have we're gonna have more guests on from the who's next yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have some podcasts. more guests here. Um, we'll try to get Adam back. We'll try to get Renee back in the future. But yeah, we'll bring some more guys. Uh, we'll get Kyle Chambers, Mike Rakshan. Who knows? We maybe we'll even get Sewer Rat on the show. Um, so yeah, uh, put your requests in there. Let, let us know what, what you guys want to see. But yeah, um, tune in next week. We're gonna have a fun show next week. Hollywood Mike and the crew. The guys are still down in Brazil doing some crazy ass shit down in Brazil. <laughs> Wait till you guys see uh, that. The, the content and and what they're filming down there. IBJJF Worlds coming up June. What is it? Second through fifth or? Yeah, June second through June fifth. June second through June fifth. You can watch that, of course, right here on Flow Grappling. Um, we got Oceana Trials ADCC, the last 
um, ADCC Trials before the big show. That's coming up in mid-June. And then, of course, yeah, all, all steam ahead. ADCC World Championships is going to break the internet. Uh, the biggest super fight in, in jiu-jitsu history, Andre Galvao versus Gordon Ryan. Uh, some big, like Corey said, some big who's number one news on the, uh, on the horizon. So make sure you guys tune in for that. Um, but crazy time in, in jiu-jitsu, <laughs> huh? It's a fun time, though, right? Yeah, this is the peak of jiu-jitsu right now. Right? I think. I think we're living it. It's kind of a fun, a really, really fun time, whether you're gi, whether you're no gi. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's something for everybody, right, Everybody, Cole? yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all more free than it ever has been. You know, true, we, true. We, we used to like to keep things behind the paywall, but we're trying to give it to you guys. We yeah, want it yeah. out for y'all, yeah. So, Let's super exciting. Love. Mm -hmm. Great time to be a fan. Heck yeah. Anything else, Connor, going down? Um, No, just st stay in touch with the uh, the Instagram, everybody. Obviously, big news. It's going to be coming out not in like a few weeks. We're talking days away from some of the biggest news drops you're going to find probably all year outside of uh, anything related to ADCC. So mm -hmm. it should be super fun. Uh, we're going to be releasing more and more Who's Next extra content on the YouTube uh, and all other channels. So, yeah, join in. Um, make sure you're sharing everything with your friends so that we can make Who's Next, uh, you know, as, as casual, friendly as possible. And you have to stop convincing all your friends to come to jiu-jitsu. They're going to just want to try it exactly. out themselves. That's, yeah, hopefully you can send it to your friends who've never done jiu-jitsu and they can get into it. And then mm -hmm. you can convince them to finally come to jiu-jitsu so you can choke them. That's the plan. <laughs> I know, that's my plan for all my friends who don't do jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. Corey, anything else going down? I got, I got one more. Uh, go to whosnextseries.com, sign up for that newsletter, uh, get a couple sneak peeks, get some early looks, early access to, uh, to everything we got. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Thank you for that, Corey. Damn, Absolutely. Do for me. Watch Who's Next, episode one and two, out now, right now, flowgrappling.com, who's next, series.com. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Who's number one podcast? Peace out. Previously on Who's Next. Are you ready for more? Oh, oh, shit. Fuck yeah. oh, shit. There's a grappling legend amongst us, and we're going to find out who's next. We're going to compete in a 16 man submission only tournament. We got one out of the way, so three left to go. Super stoked, can't wait to get in there, have my, my next match. Here for a good time, not a long time. Nobody leaves until there's a submission. You definitely say I deserve it. I freaking showed more heart than anyone. Uh, I think people should be a little scared of that. See you in the morning, go home and get some rest. We got a lot of stuff to do tomorrow.